Hey guys, I know I said the unfunded classes video will be coming out soon, but I'm a professional procrastinator, and uh, yeah. Okay, but I have something else in mind that I wanted to make. I've been looking through my top 5 videos, and I've done bossing ones, unfunded ones, but I've never actually did a top 5 of my own favorite classes, so I figured why not. i played a lot of classes, and you all know how much I enjoy power leveling, having power leveled over 15 classes in total, and I'm also a person who enjoys variety, which is why I don't really have a single main in any game I play. Take for instance Rommel the Mad God, I enjoy the class Sorcerer, Necromancer, Wizard, Warrior, Ninja, Archer. In League of Legends, I like playing multiple champions like Renekton, Darius, Aatrox, and so on and so forth. Well, in Maple Story, I had a ton of mains. I started off way back when maining a hero, then I switched to Mechanic, then I went to Dual Blade, and then I switched to Nightwalker, then went back to Dual Blade, and I have a bunch of sub mains that I had before, like Luminous, Bowmaster, Demon Avenger, Demon Slayer, Zenon, Kaiser, pretty much everything. Naturally, you're privy to the fact that I mostly enjoy Dual Blade, but I have many other characters, and in today's video, I want to talk about my 5 favorite ones. But let's make sure we add in the obligatory, this video is entirely my opinion, so please do not fight bias with bias. This top 5 is 100% subjective, I'm not picking these classes because they're top DPS or whatnot, I'm picking them because I genuinely like them. If you don't agree with these choices, then more power to you, but I thought maybe I would share my reasoning as to why I enjoy these classes, although I think every class in Maple Story is fun, to some extent. My first class I want to talk about is Nightwalker. That's how Smartboard first took off actually, because before that I was pretty much just a nobody who posted random videos, but it wasn't until Nightwalker got reworked back in late 2014 that I was able to really grow the channel, but it's a dead meme now so let's get back into the video. At the time I played Nightwalker, they were the top DPS class, zero questions asked. The closest comparison to sheer speed was Bowmaster Double Arrow Platter, which still wasn't fast enough to match her burst DPS with 4 Shadow Partners active. What made Nightwalkers more appealing than Nightlords to me were their incredibly high base damage compounded by Cygnus Knight's passive elemental reduction. You remember damage resistant bosses like Pink Bean, Hilla, Magnus, Chaos or Abyss, so on and so forth, which cut all fire, ice, lightning, and neutral based attacks, neutral meaning physical. That's how mages were able to do full damage to resistant bosses back then because their attacks were elementless. Anyway, Cygnus Knights had 50% element reduction which means any damage you were dealing to resistant bosses would be 75% instead of 50, making Nightwalkers deal significantly higher damage than Nightlords on top of just attacking faster. The one downside to Nightwalkers in exchange for broken levels of single target DPS and their crazy utility like a revive passive, backstep, bind, sustain, etc. was that they have awful mobbing, like absolutely horrendous. Nightwalker's main mobbing skill is essentially Nightlord's old Avenger skill way back when, which, you know, at the time was really strong for mobbing, but after the red update, when every class just blew up the map, it was really slow and underwhelming. I played Nightwalker for about 8 months before switching back to Dual Blade because I enjoyed DB's playstyle a lot more, plus Nexon was gonna nerf Nightwalker 6 feet under, and they did, but recently they've been giving him some much needed love with quality of life buffs and decent bitch job skills, which I never was able to experience, but my friends Hachin and Sam both made Nightwalker and I saw the new fit job skill, which was a shadow partner you place that mimics your actions and you can also recast the skill to switch places with it, which I feel like can make the class more creative. Overall though, I don't see myself going back to Nightwalker anytime soon, but it was one of my favorite classes to play at one point. Next on my list is Luminous. For a short time in between 2015 and 2016, I tried to fun one, and I got him to solo Hellgolics back when it was actually an accomplishment. I think we can all agree that Lumis had, contrary to Nightwalkers, the best mobbing in the game, but they were one of the worst bosses since their only DPS skill was Ender, which you can only use for about 30 seconds plus another 30 if you use your Hyper skill. What I really enjoyed about Luminous was their unique light-dark mechanics and how amazing their skills looked like at the time, plus their ridiculously high base damage. I suppose you can say that I was inspired to play Luminous after watching Cura and Zero by Divide play it, and just see how incredible Lumis can perform such as their amazing wave clear, and their usefulness in crowd control, especially in Golic since you can attack the little rocks that spawn at the bottom without having to move, plus due to the fact that Lumis have light and dark element attacks which let them do full boss damage to resistant bosses. So while everyone else had to do double funding to take on Chaos Root Abyss bosses, Hell, Golics, etc., Lumis only had to fund once because they had to treat them just like regular bosses such as Zakum and Horntail. Like Nightwalkers though, Lumis got slammed with heavy nerfs that almost killed the playstyle, lowering teleport range, reflections based cast range, taking the KMS mechanic where you can't just stay in light mode 24 7 cooldown to the healing skill, they just took a huge beating. However, once again like Nightwalkers, they've been seeing some resurgence and with the upcoming black update they're gonna be top 10 in DPS, which I suppose is impressive since Lumis were never the fastest class. Although after the damage cap went from 50 mil to 10 mil, classes that favored power over speed were top candidates because they could use all that power, and in Lumis in my opinion, are more partial to sheer force rather than attack speed. Probably my favorite thing about Luminous is the variety of skills, it makes the class interesting, and while for the most part you're spamming Reflection and Apocalypse, you can still use your other skills, whereas say Nightwalker there's literally only one skill you should use which is Quintuple Throw. 
Lumens were super flashy back then and their skills were amazing to watch. Now, not so much of course because every class has flashy skills, but even so, they were the ones who set the standard. Third place goes to Demon Slayer. I mean both Demon Slayer and Demon Avenger, and while I think DA is stronger than DS, DS has more satisfying skills in their kit, plus I dislike classes that have health cost skills because micromanaging that, especially in boss fights, is rather cumbersome. And I know that DAs have innate sustain in their kit, but overall I'm not too big a fan of their niche playstyle and the fact that they need percent HP to scale instead of regular strength that makes it very hard for you to if you ever do want to quit your demon adventure, you have to sell your gear and it's like only percent HP gear which means unless you're selling it to another demon adventure, no one wants it. Demon Slayers were probably the class that set the standard for explosive skills that devastate entire maps in a single shot, because Legends update, in my opinion, is where that all started. They have a huge cast of really large skills like Infernal Concussion, Demon Cry, Binding Darkness, Judgment, etc. Plus they were the first class to have a modified basic attack that looked really really cool. DS also received a bunch of love from Hyper Skills in the fit job update, giving more Demon Fury, Cerberus Chomp, and a skill that doubled number of lines to your attacks in exchange for just only 10% reduced damage. And let's not even get started with their fifth job. Demon Awakening, it basically turns a demon lash into a boss killing machine with wicked cool animations and ostentatiously high damage. I was hitting like 180 mil per line with only 3 mil range. And I love Jormengard, mostly just because I really enjoy Norse mythology. It's a cool full map attack skill that I wish lasted a little bit longer, but it's a nice skill especially for training and overall damage, and the animation is beautiful. I think the biggest gripe I have about Demon Slayer is that they glide as their main mobility mechanic, which sucks because double flash jump is way faster and it covers more distance. They used to be quite difficult to play because a lot of their skills cost a huge amount of Demon Fury, but Nexon did lower the cost of a lot of the skills to the point where I don't even go below half just because of how many ways you can restore Fury. Aside from that, I don't find Demon Slayers to have any particular weakness. They have decent wave clear, incredible damage, a wide cast of utility just like the prior two classes such as an AoE deep buff, a large radius bind, and in sustain, they're super tanky like every warrior, and overall they have a very versatile kit, and I just love the playstyle. I just wish they could let you change whether or not you can double tap jump to flash jump or glide. Demon Slayer is there, technically my third main, but I stopped playing him since it simply took too much time to main three characters, but after the V-Care update made it a lot easier to do daily quests, I find myself picking him back up again. Second place goes to Xenon. I fell in love with this class when I first saw a bossing montage of it on KMS. They were probably the next jump in power after Tempest update which brought in Kaiser, Luminous, and Angelic Buster. When Xenons were first released in GMS, they were absolutely broken. You could have zero gear on and still reach 100k range clean by level 200, which back then was ridiculous. I love their extensive repertoire of skills which stem from the modal shift mechanic which lets you switch between three skills for one ability. They also were the first, and still to date, only hybrid class which can equip both Thief and Pirate gear, although most people do stick to Thief. It made them a very versatile class. Even after Xenons got nerfed, they were still one of the best classes in the game back then, and now they may not be the greatest since we have other classes that caught up, especially after the red update which buffed explorers. I do love their playstyle and just how cool their skills look. People often ask me what my favorite skill in her Naples story is, and they're expecting to hear Blade Tempest or Ostentus Anger or Phantom Blow, but no, it's actually Beam Dance. I love hurricane type skills, because seeing a stream of lines more so back when the damage cap used to be 50 mil so you were seeing the same line over and over again, it was just so satisfying to look at. And Xenon's Beam Dance was the first double line hurricane skill to attack both sides, jump up and down, and it just was a much cooler animation than in my opinion like Ishtar's Ring or Milagui. Every hurricane type skill is a multi-hit hurricane except for maybe like Wind Archer these days, but Xenon's were the first of its kind. They're also really easy to fund, at least until the mid to late game, since they benefit from 3 stats, strength, dex, and luck, which means if you get a really crappy potential of say 12% strength, 9% luck, and 9% dex, it's still a really good bonus. The only downside is that they benefit from only 33% of each stat, which means to get 100% of a bonus, you do need to roll for a lot of all stat lines. That can be very difficult if you have intentions of becoming super funded, and it gets expensive very quickly. But before I even started gearing up my Zeno, he was plenty strong and his skills have a lot of high ratios. He doesn't have a horizontal dash, but Diagonal Chase is so useful as a vertical jump skill. Hypergram Field is good mobbing and crowd control ability despite not many people liking it too much. And the ridiculously high boss damage and total damage make them good DPSers and let's not forget about their hybrids and fit job. Pretty much all classes level 200 hyper skill is a buff that gives more damage, but Xenon is a full map attack ultimate that does crazy damage, it still gives you that damage boost, and it also debuffs targets reducing defense. And Entangling Lash is an effective bind tool. Since Xenons are a hybrid of Pirate and Thief, they get access to both Thief and Pirate Universal Fit Job skills, such as Last Resort, Loaded Dice, etc. As for their fit job skills, I do find them somewhat underwhelming. Omega Blaster is a super powerful burst ability with impressive range, but it's very impractical for any situation outside of maybe Mulong Dojo, because you need to charge it for 20 seconds, and while casting the ability, you can't move at all. So for bosses like Damien, Lucid, Chaos Vellum, and Magnus, it's almost unusable. 
You could make the argument to use Entangling Lash then use Omega Blaster, but the bind lasts only 10 seconds whereas Omega Blaster can last I think like 15 at max. As for the Core Overload, it's a different story. Core Overload is such a powerful skill, it gives 20% final damage at max charge, it has a lot of base damage in its shock attack, and it makes your skills cost zero energy. A lot of Zenons try to MP Wash to increase the duration of Core Overload because it was a fixed MP cost decrease per second, but Nexon patched that, which is disappointing, but some people were able to maintain Core Overload for up to 2 minutes, which if you think about it is ridiculous because most fit job skills last like only 30 seconds. Xenons are not as powerful as some other classes, but I just really like their playstyle and their skills. It's a really fun class, and I think it's probably if I didn't have Dual Blade, I would be playing him more. Finally, and you saw all this coming, favorite class is Dual Blade, no questions asked. Where do I start though? I'm honestly not going to say as much about this class as the other four because there isn't really much to say about Dual Blade in terms of benefits. They are an entirely selfish class, they have almost zero utility in their kit aside from maybe Flashbang, but they have so many damaging skills, it's amazing. What I look for in a class are skills that you can use no matter what job you are, as in even at level 230 you can still use 2nd and 3rd job skills, not just 4th. DBs are my ideal version of a combo class where you have the option to change skills together, it's just not mandatory as opposed to Kadena, Arc, and Blaster. I was always a fan of dual wielding in a general sense. I feel like you can do more with two swords than you can with a sword and a shield, and I would often daydream about all the things you can do with them, and while dual blades use two daggers instead of two swords, it's the same basic principle. I find their attacking style to be very fluid, not too mobile reliant like zeros, but not too grounded either like most mages or warriors. They also have some of the best bursts in the game with Asuda and Blade Tempest. Their mobbing is respectable with mid-range abilities, and they have awesome mobility with almost all of their skills moving them around the map. Flying Assaulter, Bloody Storm, Tornado Spin, Blade Ascension, it's just crazy how much you can hop, skip, and jump on this class. That's really it for dual blades though, they just do a lot of damage and have a lot of attacking skills, and are heavily biased towards thieves, and when they created a thief that uses two daggers, it was the best of both worlds. But yeah, this is my favorite class, enough said. Thanks again for watching, if you guys made it all the way to the end, let me know your favorite class in the comment section below. I hope you guys are having a great week so far, and since I'm off from work this week, I'll try to pump out one video a day for you guys. I think so many people ask me what class I should play because of contingencies like they are unfunded, or they want a strong bosser, or whatnot, and I think of it like this. If you have a job that pays $100,000 a year and you absolutely dread waking up to every morning for, versus a $60,000 job that you think of as your second home every time you go, which would you pick? It's like the same thing about, you know, happiness over money or materials or what have you. It's pretty much, it works to this as well. While the classes I enjoy are strong, they're not top dogs in the DPS chart or overall performance. Heck, Night Lords have been the reigning thief for years, but I still find Dual Blade to be a more enjoyable class, just because it's more fun. Damage is a bonus, not the goal in sight. And I'll be more than happy to tell you guys what is performing well and what isn't, but ultimately it should come down to what class you can see yourself playing for hundreds of hours a year. That should be it though, if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and if you want to see more content be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. I think that's how it works right? I actually never turn, I never clicked that bell icon, I don't know why. But I'll be seeing you guys again soon, take care.